Hi there, welcome to my YouTube channel. This is Ben here. It's really look a mess. It's really early in the morning here in England. Just going to do a quick overview of uh, radio control car stuff to do with the motor gear, which is called the pinion gear, and the gear that uh, connects to the pinion gear, which is called the spur spur gear. Some of you can't understand my accent, I'm from Devon in the southwest of England and it can sound a bit farmerish at times. But anyway, let's start. If you have a big pinion gear, such as this one here, which is that's a thirty five tooth forty eight DPI pinion gear. Which means that <clears throat> the uh, the last bit, the DPI bit, is to do with how much gap there is between the cogs. I'm not a hundred percent sure on what what it is exactly to do with that, but it is related to it because you can get mod one gears. I've got one on my Thunder Tiger EB4. And the gears are really far apart, and basically you need a a smaller, a comparatively a smaller pinion gear in in teeth wise, but the the gear is actually bigger if you take the same amount of teeth to the same amount of teeth on a 48 dp or 30, even 32 dp. Uh, DPI uh, the mod 1 ones are really for 1 8th scale cars and basically this is another bigger pinion gear this is a 40, 47 tooth 47 tooth 48 DP this is huge and this is literally the biggest 48 tooth that I can find that will go with a 84 or even a 67 tooth spur gear it, it, the motor will just not fit with this gear on 35 tooth is the biggest I can get it to fit and even then it, I need f a lot of thread lock on it to keep the pinion on so I would actually say 32, 33 is the maximum if you're looking at a 48 DP pinion gear and a 67 tooth spur gear and you'd have to make check your motor temperatures very often to do this. This is what a differential will look like if you open up inside your car. This is one out of a HPI Sprint 2. As you can see, you, I'll just try and show you. I'm turning that towards you and that one's turning towards me. Turn this away from me and it'll turn towards you. And it should. Yeah, it's turning. Yeah, so it's turning away from you. Maybe it's because it's a ca in the camera and it's all reflected. But yeah, this is standard differential if you're on the locker differential the easiest way to do it is by using two or three body clips open the differential up put the body clips in so that the bevel gears cannot move and this will lock it right so it's basically a, a differential it is for when the car goes round the corner, the wheels have to compensate. Drive wheels have to compen compensate for going around the corner, and so do the uh, wheels that aren't the drive wheels. And I'm just trying to think if, the, if there's a differential it in the wheels that aren't the drive wheels. I can't think of getting brain fog here. I know what it is, but I can't think right now. 
Uh, that's weird. I'm brain fog because I'm on medication and stuff. Uh, yeah. So, if you want high top end, you go for a big pinion gear, a low spur gear. If you want good acceleration, best acceleration, you go for a high pinion gear and a low, uh, uh, sorry, a high spur gear and a low pinion gear. Or you can go for a low, it's hard to think about actually, it's harder than you think. It's lower pinion gear. The slower, the faster the acceleration, but the lower the top end. The smaller the spur gear, the lower the acceleration, the lower the top end, but the better the acceleration. It's quite quite complicated when you get into it, and when you get into the nitro and two, two and three gears, you got to be on the ball to get them right as well because basically when it changes gear it's going to a, a smaller cog a smaller gear it's going to a smaller gear when it's changing gear as you see because the smaller the pinion gear which is what they, the nitro cars will go to because pinion gear is a motor gear the faster the car will be top end I mean not acceleration wise on this car here it's a HPI Sprint 2 got a first 64 tooth pinion and tr right now I'm trying to get a, a the 35 tooth spur gear on here and it is very difficult got got a big 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 ESC on here as you can see, it's, it's a one and eight scale, eight scale. Turn energy, good, really good, good quality. Got a fan on it as well, as you can see up here. Don't like the way that they guard the fan because it hits the fan when it's going round. You can't hear it here, but when it's going round full speed, it makes a stupid, terrible noise. It does. So swap the steering server out to the one that would work, and this one seems to have packed up as well. So I'm having a really bad luck at the moment with this stuff. So might have to order new servo, steel and servo. I haven't got that many spares of them. The, the, the radio gear is packing up as well. Everything's part of the pack up on this car. I think it's just getting old because this is this is one of the original Sprint 2s. This isn't a Sprint 2 fuck. Originally, I've made it into a Sprint 2 flux. It's, this is at, it's actually came brushed with a Team Orion 14 turn brushed R540 uh, can. <laughs> Bit different to a 5900 KV HPI branded, but it's actually a Castle Kate motor. 5900 kV, but I've actually got a 5700 kV castle in there. I want to bet proper stuff. Castle, I don't go for HPI. If I can avoid it, I go for castle. Just go straight for the best stuff. That's the way. Yeah, I don't diss people that have got HPI because I know I've got HPI Vector in my HPI E Firestorm. And it does a job. I did have a FDX Vantage, but it, 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 it's broke. Basically, the uh, spur gear, the pinion gear wouldn't line up with the spur gear, and it, it just kept it kept rounding the spur gear off. I could, couldn't figure that out for life, me. And I, I've been doing this since I was 14, and I'm now 30. I couldn't, couldn't figure it out. So, basically, that's just, just sitting there. Spare parts, you know, if you want. Any FTX Vantage parts, I've even got a carbon fibre chassis for it. Car loads of carbon fibre parts, and including the battery retainer. 
for that touch you're on eBay at the moment. If you search for B underscore Roger 2002, you'll find me on the. I think it's B underscore Roger 2002, unless it's B Rogers, B Rogers underscore 2002, it's one of them. And you can buy it off me and I'll post it to you. If you're in the UK, if you are abroad, the process should be slightly more, as you can imagine. Anyway, I hope I've given you a bit more insight into this, because it is a quite a complicated subject. And not everyone knows about it, but I might just be talking like, like everyone knows about this stuff. But I'm just trying to, trying to educate people. At the end of the day, if everyone knows this, then... Fair enough, I'll delete the video, but if this is helpful to just one person, I'm happy, they're happy, job done. Yeah, so, thank you very much for watching this video, please uh, like it if you've liked what you've seen. I wish I could show you more of my radio control cars, they've got three working at the moment, well it's two and a half. That one can't all work, it just needs the radio gear and the, the, the pinion gear thread locked on. It's got some new thread lock. The old stuff run out. Yeah, so. When it's sorted out, I'll make another video of the HPI Sprint 2. I, oh, I've got to sort the server out as well for the steering. Flipping thing. It really does my head in like that. It does if he's breaking. It's probably because got so much power for it, he can't handle it. Even the steering server he can't handle it. It's ridiculous, I'm joking about that, but yeah, it seems like it. Anyway, I'll end this video now. Thanks very much for watching. And please like, subscribe, and comment below. Have a nice day. Bye.